Is your computer not working properly? You press the power button and nothing happens. Or maybe it does turn on, but nothing comes up on your display. So if you're in this exact situation right now and you need some help, then let me help you. Let's guide you through how to fix your problem. But if you're not, you're very fortunate and your gaming PC is running just fine, or maybe you don't have one, then watch this anyway, because I'm telling you, one day this is gonna save your bacon. Unless you're vegan, then it will save the whole pig. Yes, that's quite a good line. Let me guide you through the full process after a short word from this video sponsor. The Omen 25L is here, bringing PC gaming simplicity to everyone. This desktop system has everything you need to get gaming, with the incredible NVIDIA RTX 3060 Ti graphics card and powerful 8-core CPUs. No parts knowledge or build experience required, just plug it in, then experience the latest games at sky-high frame rates. You even get NVIDIA RTX ray tracing and frame rate boosting DLSS technology. DLSS is supported in games like Red Dead Redemption 2, Cyberpunk 2077, and is coming to Battlefield 2042. Get yours today with that link down below. Generally speaking, there are two types of failure you could have with a gaming PC. One is what I call physical, when something is physically wrong, maybe something's not plugged in, or a bit of hardware might be dead. And then the other is all about configuration. Somewhere, usually in the motherboard, something is misconfigured, there's a setting that's on that should be off, or a value is set to something that it shouldn't, and it is preventing your PC from booting. Both of them are very annoying, they're both quite common, but again, fairly easy to fix. Almost certainly the most common reason that your PC won't turn on is because you haven't plugged everything in properly. I do this all of the time. It can be as simple as just flicking the switch from off to on. Maybe your power cord isn't plugged in at either end, or it is actually something inside the PC. Pretty much treat it like you've plugged nothing in at all and just go through one by one and just double check all of the connections are actually plugged in. You need to have an ATX connector and then a CPU up here. If you're using a graphics card, you've got to make sure this is plugged in as well. And if you are using a modular power supply, then you've got to make sure you have actually plugged the ends in here as well. And what can happen is that when you're doing all of your cable management, you end up pulling on a cable and it slightly comes out. So you think you've plugged it in, you're very sure because you have, but it has actually come loose during the installation. So just make sure all of your connections are safe and secure. Probably the second most common issue is this. Can you spot what I've done wrong? If I turn this computer on, then you'll notice nothing will actually come up on screen. I do promise that I'm not cheating, by the way. I have actually plugged this monitor in. You can see we've got a DisplayPort cable here. We've got it connected to power. The monitor is definitely turned on. And it's connected to the computer, right? Wrong. It is actually connected to the motherboard itself and not the graphics card. And once we plug this in, you should see that our PC then does actually light up. A really subtle difference, but a really important one. The problem that I had with my first ever gaming PC was actually this, that I pressed the power button and nothing happened. In today's money, well, you can see it's even more confusing because you do actually have some RGB lighting, which is even more confusing because it should work, but it doesn't. So what's going on? Well, in this instance, it's actually caused by these tiny little cables down here at the bottom. You have your power and reset switch that does actually make the front panel of your case work. And what I did was to plug in the power LEDs into the the power switch so I plugged it in but I'd done it wrong those two very similar things that sound almost the same are definitely not one does the lights one actually does the power button do check your motherboard manual to actually make sure you have plugged it in the right one press the button and then you should see that it does actually turn on there was a bit of a dramatic delay there wasn't it but here we go which then leads us on to the inspiration for this video. This was exactly how my PC did actually boot up or not boot up when I built it. We have this little red light down the bottom and pretty much most motherboards will have these. These are your debug LEDs. And if you look very closely, they do actually tell you what the lights mean. The way that the motherboard works when you press that power button is to essentially cycle things up in turn. So it starts with the CPU, then it moves on to the RAM, then it just initializes everything in order. The issue for me is that the debug RAM LED stayed red and wouldn't turn off. So we know that there is some sort of problem with the RAM. So if this happens to you and you've got a DRAM issue, turn the power supply off so you're not going to electrocute yourself. Then remove all of your RAM. Even if you know it's in properly, just take both of the sticks out for a second. Give it a bit of a once over, make sure that there's nothing physically wrong with it. Then just grab one stick and put it back 
in dim number two. Ensure that it is pushed in as far as it will go and that you do actually have it the right way round. But then importantly, don't put this stick in because what we're trying to do here is work out whether the problem is with the motherboard or with the RAM itself. And by using one stick, it makes it a lot easier to actually work out what the problem is. Because I've had a couple of issues before where motherboards, you have one of the slots on the board doesn't actually work properly, or maybe one of the sticks of RAM is dead. It's uncommon, but I mean, at this stage, it could be anything, right? Is it the board or is it the RAM? Unfortunately, it seems that that hasn't fixed the issue either. So the problem may not be the slots, it could be the stick of RAM itself. So now if we take this one out and then replace it with the other one, we then know that if this works, we do have a dead stick of RAM here. This hasn't helped either. We still have that red DRAM light. So what we could do is use every slot and every stick, and that would sort of rule out whether there was a problem with any of the sticks or any of the channels. But you'll see that our PC has miraculously started working. And this is because if you do leave it for a good five minutes or so, it actually does a few things internally to try and fix the issue. Because the problem here was actually that the memory was trying to run too fast for the motherboard. The motherboard itself was actually trying to run the XMP profile on the RAM, and because it wasn't able to work properly, it kept boot cycling and boot cycling, but it was getting stuck every time on the RAM. In my instance, though, you can see we are actually still stuck at this ASRock screen, so something does still need to be reset. What we will do is actually turn the whole computer off, and then we're going to reset the motherboard's onboard memory so that it loads its default values. Higher-end motherboards, you probably have like a little button or something at the back or maybe on the board itself. They will say reset CMOS, but if you don't have that luxury, then you will have to grab a little screwdriver, something like this, look in your motherboard manual and find where it says clear CMOS. It's gonna seem a little bit daunting if you haven't done this before, because we're gonna have to jump some pins. But you wanna make sure that your PC is completely off, it's not plugged into power and it is off of the power supply. Then you find these little pins that for me are down the bottom of the motherboard. And we connect these together with the screwdriver for five to 10 seconds. And then we can turn the PC on again. This time, you're probably gonna see some more debug LEDs, but hopefully, like we just saw, the PC will realize that the CMOS has been reset and then turn itself back on again and load those optimized or at least the default settings that you'll get and you should get a display. So all I needed to do was reset the CMOS, set the memory to a lower speed and that fixed it. My PC now works. However, I am well aware that this might not have fixed your problem, so we must continue the troubleshooting journey next by talking about updating the BIOS. And this sounds incredibly boring, doesn't it? BIOS stands for Basic Input Output System, and this is what allows you to use a newer generation CPU like a 5600X, let's say, in an older AMD motherboard. And this is quite a big problem, to be honest, because pretty much all of the motherboards I've built with have needed to be updated before they would actually work. What you'd do is you'd get a red light similar to what we've seen that says CPU, your PC won't really do anything, or maybe it won't turn on at all. But in practice, all you need to do is actually update the BIOS. The good news is that it is actually very easy to do. If you want to see a full guide, you can find this video in the top right corner of your screen that will walk you through the process. Another common problem is actually with these things. These things. PCIe riser cables, and personally speaking, I don't really like these because they do add another point of failure to your system, but realistically, the idea is that you can actually use this to either have a GPU and a vertical GPU mount and maybe make your PC look a little bit better, or more likely, in a system like this, the NZXT H1, anything that is an ITX system when you can't actually fit a graphics card in the slots, what can often happen, and has happened to me, is that everything will seem like it's working. You won't have any error lights at all, but you won't be able to get anything on your display. You just need to plug your graphics card into the motherboard directly, which yes, if you're using an ITX system, sorry, means taking it apart and building it on the box. Then you can go into the BIOS, find where it says advanced, go to chipset configuration, find where it says PCIe link speed or something very similar, and then you should have a few different options. You want to set this to Gen 3 so that it is actually using the native Gen 3 speed of this riser cable, and then you'll find that the system should work. In an ideal world, you'd want to swap this out for a Gen 4 riser, but for now, that should fix your issue. Sorry if it's starting to sound complicated, but ultimately it sort of is. I've had an issue once before where the front panel on the case didn't work, but everything else did so the PC wasn't able to turn on. If you want to verify that that's not the problem, then you can unplug the power switch. Then you can use the same jumping method to connect these two pins. And your PC should then just turn on. 
If your motherboard's telling you that you've got a problem with the VGA or the graphics cards, the easiest thing to do is just to make sure that it is plugged in properly, take it out, put it back in, make sure there's nothing in the slot, make sure it's powered up enough, and make sure you are actually using a power supply that's got enough power and meets the minimum power requirements for that card. Assuming you have a normal Intel processor that has an integrated GPU or an iGPU inside it, something like a 9900K, let's say, then you can actually just take this graphics card out, plug your display or HDMI connector into the motherboard, the one we told you not to use earlier, turn your PC back on, and then if it does start outputting to the display, then you know the problem is actually with the graphics card itself. Which would probably be the most annoying problem in the world, because that's the component you can't really buy at the moment. If your motherboard lights up and says CPU, now this doesn't necessarily mean the problem is actually with the CPU itself. It means that it can't get past the stage of initializing the CPU. And I think in most cases it is actually just going to be that the power isn't supplied to it. But this could also be that something is misconfigured. If you've been overclocking, maybe it's decided that it's not happy with it anymore. So clearing the CMOS is a good way to try and fix that. But then it could also be something a little bit more obscure. Maybe something is shorting on the motherboard. Have you used all of the standoffs in the case? Is the motherboard actually screwed in properly? Or maybe is a bit of the motherboard touching the case and that's what's causing the problem? I received a phone call only a few weeks ago from my cameraman Gareth, who has actually built quite a few PCs in his time. Turns out what he had done is not plugged in the CPU caller power cable. So everything was working for a few seconds, but then the CPU was hitting 100 degrees and then the whole PC was turning off. In a way, it's almost better to have less experience with computers because you start to think that you haven't done anything wrong it must be something within the system but in actual fact if you do just go through every single thing methodically you take things out you put them back chances are you will be able to fix your problem if this video has been helpful then please smash the like button and get yourself subscribed but if you've had an issue like this yourself then what was it and how did you fix it? And if this video hasn't fixed your problem, then let us know what it is. I'm sure one of us, either myself or one of the amazing people in the PC-centric community, will be able to help you out. Thank you so much for watching. The full parts for this is listed down in the description below.